Since January 6th of 2020, if you are a United States citizen that has purchased a Bible or if you've bought anything from Dick's Sporting Goods, Cabela's, Bass Pro, and the like, you very well may be under government surveillance. Welcome to the land of the free, right? Now, in today's video, I would like to discuss the implications of that, what I think that means going forward, and also how we battle it here and now, at least to delay the inevitable for as long as possible. So, if that sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to stick around. My name is Justin. This is Built on Faith Homestead or Leave in Egypt, depending on which video platform you prefer to watch your content on. Stick around for the rest of the video. I once was lost, oh, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. So, if you couldn't already tell in the video, we got a bunch of freezing rain last night. It is thawing out today, uh, however, it is still raining, and it's kind of like walking on a skating rink with a puddle on top. It's a little bit treacherous out here if you live in the Missouri area, so be careful out there. Let's jump right into this article. Now, this was sent to me by a family member that's a follower of the channel, and she had another family member of ours send it to her, who is also a follower of the channel. You guys know who you are. Thank you for this information. I want to make sure and pass that along before we get into it. Now, this is from the Judiciary Committee. I'm going to read just a few sections to you. This is a rather lengthy article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I will post the clips of the article somewhere right in here somewhere. Uh, there will be a link in the description box down below. I encourage you to go look, it out, look at it and read it for yourself. Check it out. Make sure that you are checking on me to make sure I'm not lying to you. Now, let's just jump into this real quick. It says, exclusive, federal investigators ask banks to search and filter customer transactions by using terms like MAGA and Trump as part of an investigation into January 6th, warning that, purchase, that purchases of religious text could indicate extremism. Oh, look out, them extreme people buying religious text. The House Judiciary Committee revealed on Wednesday. Fox News Digital has learned the committee also obtained documents that indicate officials suggested that bank query uh, that banks query transactions uh, with keywords like Dick Sporting Goods, Cabela's, and Bass Pro Shops, and more. It goes on to say, according to this analysis, I'm going to call him FinCEN. I don't know how it, what it's actually. How are you supposed to say it? However, it is just an acronym for the federal government institution that is overlooking these things. It's making these requests of, you need to look into these people because they bought a Bible or they bought some orange hat or vest from Bass Pro. <laughs> it says this, uh, FinCEN warned financial institutions of extremist indicators, man, big scary words, that include transportation charges such as bus tickets, rental cars, or plane tickets for travel areas with no apparent purpose, uh, or the purchase of books, including religious texts, and subscriptions to other media containing extremist views. Jordan detailed in a letter to the former director of FinCEN, Noah Bischoff, uh, uh, a career employee. In other words, FinCEN used large financial institutions to comb through the private transactions of their customers for suspicious charges on the basis of protection uh, on the basis of protected political and religious expression, Jordan wrote. And I want to read one more section to you. It says this, Jordan said the committee obtained documents uh, showing that FinCEN distributed slides prepared by KeyBank to other banks to explain how they could use merchant category codes called MCCs, right, to detect customers whose transactions may reflect potential active shooters and who may include uh, dangerous international terrorists domestic terrorists and homegrown violent extremists or these lone wolves this is crazy absolutely crazy um and Jordan said, uh, the slide instructs financial institutions to query the transactions uh, using certain MCC codes like 3484 for small arms or 5091, sporting and recreational goods and supplies, and keywords such as Cabela's, Dick's Sporting Goods, and Bass Pro Shops, 
among others. Now, I want you to think about the implications of that. If you're a United States citizen living in the land of the free, supposedly, although I don't really buy that uh, myself anymore, but if you live in the land of the free and you have purchased anything from Bass Pro or Cabela's or Dick's Sporting Goods or you went to your local Bible bookstore and you purchased or regular bookstore or maybe you bought an Amazon digital version of a Bible, well then, potentially you are under government surveillance as we speak today. Or I don't know, maybe you paid for a subscription to somebody that you like to follow on social media. You paid to their Patreon account or something like that, right? Or you gave a super thanks maybe even using your debit card or credit card or whatever, however that works, right? Maybe you did those types of things. Well, now you might be considered an extremist and somebody that needs to be monitored because who knows, you could be a lone wolf. You could be a homegrown terrorist, a domestic terrorist. You could be the menace to society that our government wants to paint you out to be. Think about that for just a minute. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. But crazy seems to be the world we live in today. Now, where do I think this is actually going in the future? Well, I believe that January 6th is just being used as a catalyst, as uh, something to be the liftoff point, even more so maybe uh, the liftoff point, to religious persecution within the United States. We know that the Bible teaches us that the persecution for the children of God is only going to get worse as we grow closer to the return of Christ. So it would only make sense that even in the land of the free, they are going to have to find ways to persecute you as the child of God. And I believe even went all the way to the point that we need to be willing to give up our life for Christ. I believe that's what the Bible teaches. And that's the direction that we are headed. That's what my extremist religious text teaches me. <laughs> oh, man. That is what it, it's what it teaches, though. Right? And think about it. You probably are a threat to the government because you have a supreme authority that is up and above the government. Our, our Bible teaches us that we are to follow the laws of the land to the best of our ability up and into a certain point. Once they cross over God's law, think about Nebuchadnezzar and the Hebrew boys. When they wouldn't bow to the image, it was the law of the land to bow to the image. When they wouldn't do it, they were thrown into a fiery furnace. We all know the story. One of my favorite parts of that story is the Bible says that there was one like the Son of God in there with them, which I find extremely comforting in there with them, not close to them, not around them, not above them, not beside them, but with them in the fire, right? I believe that God is with us. I believe that Christ living inside of us is with us through the trials and tribulations of this life. Now, uh, with that persecution, or with that uh, understanding that we have a higher authority than our governmental system, uh, I don't believe in the temple of democracy. I don't. Uh, I don't believe uh, in, in any of that kind of stuff. I believe in God, right? And so, since that is my highest authority, I guess... I don't know, maybe we're all considered extremists, potential terrorists, right? However, I will tell you this, our Bible uh, calls for a fight and for a battle, but not one that is necessarily done physically, right? But one that we fight on bended knee, fighting against dark powers and principalities in high places. Uh, it's a demonic spiritual warfare fight. <laughs> That's the fight we're in. Uh, and you can't shoot it and you can't... Um, you can't, you can't lasso it. It's, it's, it's like trying to catch the wind. Good luck with that, right? So how do we battle this now, though? Like, what are some things we can do to help with this, right? Uh, now, I do believe it's the inevitable. I really do. Like, these things are going to come. However, I believe that if we went to a cash system again, right? So many of us, I, I know you can still spend cash today, right? But do you understand that's why we're headed to a cashless society so we can get these levels of control? And they're using things like January 6th to get them, right? We have to be able to go through all of your records, right? And they'll bust somebody. They'll pick some, probably, well, I won't go there. They'll pick somebody, right? And they will um, make them out to be the worst human being on the planet. And um, they will use that they went through these transactions to do it. And this is the reason why we have to have a cashless society because we have to be able to track and trace every single thing you do. But if you and I would make a move to cash or to trading goods or services for things, let me put it to you this way. If I took cash money that I've got in my pocket and I went to my local Bible bookstore and I bought a Bible, well, then the government can't trace that, can they? Or at least it's 
really difficult for them to trace that. So, do you understand why we got to get rid of cash now in today's society? Do you understand why they want this digital ID system that carries all your banking records and your health records and everything that you do and everything that you purchase and everything that you put on social media? Do you understand why they want that now? It's because it's for security and safety and it goes all the way back to like that Patriot Act after 9-11, right? Which, I'll be honest with you, as a very young individual, whenever all that occurred, it kind of made sense to me as a young, naive individual who thought that our government had our best interest in mind. Whenever they said, hey, we want to be able to tap the phones of pretty much anybody and everybody that we want to, my idea was, well, if you're not doing anything bad, then what's the big deal? The problem is, I learned that what our United States government says is bad, I actually don't think is always bad. Somebody buying a Bible, I do not consider them to be a potential extremist. So... When you understand that, it makes this kind of stuff, uh, makes you question it just a little bit more. What are the intentions and what are the motives behind it? And I think if we look through, look at it through a biblical lens, it makes perfect sense, the intentions and the direction that we are headed. The direction we are headed is persecution for the children of God all across the world, which is why I beg and plead with people to get prepared to break away from Egypt, to get away from uh, this world system as much as possible, and live a life that honors God, that is free, but is not always easy, that's maybe tougher. Maybe you have to give up your modern day conveniences, much like they did when they had to leave Egypt, right? They didn't have food and shelter and water out in the wilderness in the beginning, right? Like, like they didn't have all that guaranteed to them. They had to have faith and they had to depend on God and God provided for them. We all know the story if you've ever studied it out, right? We have to learn to depend on God the same way, which means we need to be willing to be uncomfortable, to spend some time in the wilderness, to spend some time in an uncomfortable situation in order to truly be free. You and I, that's our job. That's what we need to be doing. And we do that, like this, this whole leaving Egypt idea, right? Like we do that to show the power of God. It's not to show my own like genius or my own work ethic or anything like that, which praise the Lord because I'm pretty dumb. But <laughs> if, if we are showing the power of God, if you read that whole story, right? And everything God did for the children of Israel, he did it to showcase his power. And all throughout the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament quite a bit, God uses that as a reminder. Remember what I did for you. Remember how I took care of you. Remember what I did for your fathers and how I split the Red Sea and I took care of them and all of these things, right? Remember that. And it's to showcase the power of God. That is our job. That is what we are here to do on this side of eternity. So, where are we headed? We're headed towards religious persecution. There's no doubt about that. What do we do? We depend on God. We move away from the system that the world wants us in, and we move into this more of the systems that God wants us in, and the things God wants us to do to get away from the chains of society. We need to move away from that and move to the freedom that is in God. My name is Justin. This has been Built on Faith Homestead or Leaving Egypt. I sure do appreciate you guys watching. Try to stay warm. Try to stay dry. We'll catch you on the next video.